Hi, I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks, and today we're making chicken stock. What is chicken stock? Chicken stock is a base of so many different recipes that we use in the restaurant industry and for cooking. It's a foundational skill that we teach students uh, in culinary school. It's something you need to know how to do well. And there's so many people that do it poorly. Uh, and this is something that uh, I think as a chef you can be judged by or as a home cook. I want to show to you that it's not that hard to do. That you should be making your own chicken stock. If you have leftover bones, you should be making your own stocks. A lot of people will ask what's the difference between a stock and a broth. Stock is made with bones. It's generally a little thicker than a broth because the bones have a lot of connective tissue like cartilage uh, and gelatin that kind of uh, after a long time in the water will start to break down and it'll thicken your stock. Whereas a broth is usually made with meat. Uh, stocks and broths are made with pretty much the same ingredients except for the fact that stocks are bones and broth is meat. And the meat is kind of meant to be eaten with the broth. Uh, stocks are never eaten by themselves. They're not seasoned with salt. Broths are because they're, they're basically something you're going to have uh, as a meal or a starter to a meal. Uh, let's talk about the ingredients. I have two chickens worth of bones, wings, uh, leg bones, carcasses. Uh, I have some yellow onions. I think there's about four here. Some celery, carrots, bay leaves, black peppercorns, fresh thyme, and parsley stems. Uh, with the onions and the carrots, we do about 50% onions and 25% carrots, 25% celery. It's called a mirepoix. That is a, uh, a standard ratio for making chicken stock. So the bones, I probably have about three to four pounds of bones, and then I'm gonna put in the pot with cold water. The first thing we're gonna do is put our bones into our pot and cover them with water, okay? Uh, people will always ask me, or they'll say, do you wash your chicken before you cook it? I never wash chicken before I cook it. Uh, and the reason for that is that it's contaminating your sink uh, and you're kind of dripping chicken juice all over the place. And by simply cooking the chicken or the chicken bones, you are killing any bacteria or germs that are on that chicken. Washing your chicken does not help at all. Just cook your chicken to the proper temperature, okay? So here is my bones. They go right into the pot. Okay, and then I'm gonna put cold water over my bones. Cold water. Uh, the reason I don't use hot water is there's a couple of reasons. And one of the reasons is that I was told in school was that when you put hot water on bones, it seals up the pores of the bones and you don't get as much extraction or flavor out of them. Uh, it's probably a little less that and more that when you take hot water out of your tap, it has a little more lead in it and that's not good for anyone. So cold water is the best. You also want these bones to come up in the cold water That'll also kind of start to melt some of the fat and get some of the protein that we want to actually take out of the stock. It'll give them more time to kind of render out. So cold water, bones, okay? I have about eight quarts here and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put all eight in there, okay? Normally you just want to cover the bones, um, but putting a little more water than you need in there is okay because this is gonna evaporate. We're never gonna put a lid on stock. You don't wanna put a lid on stock. Um, sometimes it helps, uh, uh, not helps, but sometimes what it's gonna do is that's gonna make it boil too rapidly. The bones are gonna break up and you'll get a stock that some of the fat and the protein actually cooks back into and it makes it cloudy. You want a nice clear stock at the end. So my water, my bones, I'm gonna turn this on, okay? And we're gonna bring this to a boil, right? You wanna watch it, bring it to a boil, and then we're gonna lower it to a simmer. So when it comes to a boil, I'll show you what to do. We have our bones and water in the pot, and while we wait for them to come to a simmer, we're gonna cut our vegetables. I have my herbs and spices, I'm gonna put them aside for now, because we don't need them till later. Uh, when it comes to stock making, you're going to cut the vegetables according to how long the stock's gonna cook. When we do a chicken stock, it only cooks for two hours, maybe three at the most. So we want to cut our vegetables a little smaller. If you're doing a stock like a veal stock or a beef stock, it cooks for over 12 to 14 hours. And you want to cut the vegetables a little bigger. 
because you want the extraction of flavor to go a little slower. We want the extraction of flavor to go a little faster, so we're gonna cut our vegetables a little smaller. So, uh, like I said, I have uh, two stalks of celery. I am just gonna cut them in pieces. I do wash my vegetables for this. Uh, so my celery is cut into pieces. You can see here that they're not that big, they're not that small. Uh, my carrots have been peeled. I'm gonna cut those into pieces. And what's cool about this is you don't have to be too exact. Uh, we're making stock. All this stuff is gonna be strained out and kind of give up all its flavor. Now we're gonna cut the onions. Uh, if you wanna see other ways to cut onions, I have a video uh, on how to cut onions. Check it out. Uh, but for this, it's for stock. And I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate mail for this or bad comments, but I was taught in culinary school to leave the skins on for chicken stock. Um, I had a German teacher. He said that you didn't have to throw the skins out, that they lend a lot of color to the stock. Um, I have colleagues and friends that would disagree with that. I have people that would agree with me, but I'm just gonna quarter these onions and leave the skin on. As long as they're not dirty, it's okay. So I have all my vegetables cut. I'm gonna put these aside and uh, we'll move on to the next step. We gotta wait for the chicken stock to kind of come to a simmer and we gotta do a few other things before I add the vegetables. We have our bones in the pot, we cover them with cold water and now I've brought them up to a simmer. You can see this is bubbling away. First thing I'm gonna do is I have a container and if you look at the stock, there's a bunch of scum, uh, which is just basically protein that we don't want to boil back into our stock. So what we're gonna do there's a little bit of fat in here too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna skim off the scum. And the teacher I had that taught me said, skim the scum with a skimmer, let the stock simmer. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take off as much of this um, protein or scum and we're gonna let this simmer. And basically this is trash. You don't wanna keep this. This really doesn't have any, any use. Um, I, try to like to, I try to take the scum off because later on, what I like to do is once the fat melts, I like to try and save the chicken fat because chicken fat is great to use to cook a lot of different things. I never want this stock to come to a boil either. I want this stock to lightly simmer and bubble away. Um, if it's boiling, what's gonna happen is, is everything's gonna get broken up and we're gonna get a cloudy stock. So now that uh, I've skimmed it a few times, it's come to a simmer, I'm gonna add my vegetables or my mirepoix, celery and carrots and onions, okay? I'm gonna let this cook for a little longer and then I'll add all my herbs and my spices. I'll skim it throughout just to make sure there's nothing like floating around in there um, and we'll come back. My aromatics or my vegetables have been in there for about a half hour and now I'm gonna add my herbs. So my parsley stems go in, my thyme goes in, my bay leaves, dry bay leaves go in, and my black peppercorns go in. Um, sometimes if you do a soup um, and you, you're not gonna strain everything, you can tie all these herbs up uh, and with some butcher twine, and that's a, sa um, that's a bouquet garni, or you can put everything into some cheesecloth and that's a sachet. But because I'm straining everything out of this eventually at the end, I'm not too worried, I just throw everything in. You don't have to worry, everything's getting strained out, so you don't have to tie anything up. And that's the idea here. We're gonna let it go until it tastes good. It's gonna be a little bland because we're not getting any salt to it, but we're gonna let it go until it tastes good. I'm gonna let it happily simmer away until it's ready, and when it is, we'll come back. What I'm looking for as far as the taste goes is that it has some mouthfeel, it has some body. All of that gelatin and connective tissue in the, the, the bones have, uh, has melted, so it'll feel a little kind of sticky. It'll have some mouthfeel and feel a little dense. Um, it also has a very good chicken flavor. Uh, I want to taste chicken with a slight bit of vegetables, but not vegetables and chicken. I want to taste chicken first. So usually I'll let this go for about an hour and uh, it'll have decent flavor. Stock is done, or at least I think it's done. Let me taste really quick. It's got some good body. It's got good flavor. Uh, my chicken is cooked all the way. I'm gonna shut it off now. I have my straining stuff. I'm gonna see if there's any more fat that I can take off. Get the last of any sort of stuff that's on top. Get rid of that. And now I'm gonna strain it, okay? I'm gonna strain this twice. You don't have to strain it twice, but I am gonna strain it twice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it from my pot into this plastic jug. Clean my pot, 
uh, to get this ready to ice down because you have to ice this down and get it cold as fast as possible, which I'm gonna show you. But I'm doing a fair amount of stock here. I'm doing about six quarts of stock because I'm making this for a long time uh, and I'm gonna freeze most of it. So you wanna strain it. I'm gonna strain it twice. This is just to get the, this is kind of a, um, a decent mesh. It's not super fine. I'm gonna get all the big chunks out uh, strain it into here, wash my pot, and then I'm gonna strain it through a fine mesh sieve. So, uh, because I have such a huge pot, a pot that my wife hates because it is huge, uh, most people don't have this big of a pot, you can always use a smaller pot and do a little less. I'm just gonna take a smaller pot, move this over, and I'm gonna strain into my plastic jug. Uh, and I'm gonna get as much as I can out you can do this over the sink if you don't want to make a mess. Normally I do it over the sink, but uh, it doesn't look so good on camera. Uh, I've had people ask me, well, what do I do with those vegetables and the chicken bones and this and that? Uh, you can feed this to your dog if the dog can have chicken bones, but normally chicken bones aren't good for dogs. Uh, you can also uh, throw them away, okay, and not feel bad about that, or compost them and not feel bad about it. Here's the thing, if you've done this right, the vegetables and the chicken bones have given up their flavor to the stock and they're useless to you now, okay? My pot, my big pot now and finish straining that, you know? I let it sit here for a moment or two. With this, I don't push it through. I don't tamp it, I don't do anything. I just give it a little tap. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this over to the sink, strain it one more time into the pot and ice it down. We're over at my sink and I'm gonna strain the stock a second time. Um, I have the pot that I cooked the stock in, I washed it out. I have my stock here, it's still hot, and I have a finer mesh sieve. So the first one had kind of large holes, and the second one has smaller holes to get all the finer particulate out. And I do this when I'm in the restaurant. I do it from large hole to small hole every time. So I'm gonna just pour this through. And again, like I said earlier, you might not be making this much stock, and that's okay, you know? Uh, you might make smaller amounts. I make about six to eight quarts at a time because I have the big pot, I have all the equipment for it. You can make smaller amounts of this, and that's okay. Um, the next important thing that I do here, and uh, this is, for me, non-negotiable, you have to ice down your stocks. You have to get this as cold as possible, as fast as possible. So I'm gonna put my sink with, uh, puts ice water in my sink, basically. Um, this is just ice that I buy at the local store. And this is something we do at restaurants. And what we teach our students is to ice large amounts of things down quickly. I'll put some uh, ice in my sink, some cold water in my sink, and I'm gonna bring it up to the level of the stock in the pot. So the stock is about this much in my pot. I'm gonna bring the ice water up to about that level, maybe a little higher, and I'm gonna swirl it around, okay? Um, and get this cold really fast. A lot of people will leave stuff on the counter and let it chill. Um, it's like the old grandma thing, she leaves stuff on the counter uncovered and chills thing. This is the way I chill almost everything. In the sink, ice, water, uh, and stir it occasionally so that it gets cold fast. This is the best way to chill stuff and to ensure that you're not gonna get sick. And you'll see the reason why I wash the pot here is because Stainless steel or, or metal pots cool quicker than plastic. Uh, I'll probably store it in my plastic jug, but it'll take forever to cool in that plastic jug. So I almost always cool in stainless or in my pot. So what I do is I'll save all the bones and the skin and any leftover meat I have and I'll freeze it. It's something that I do occasionally when I'm cooking. Uh, I freeze the bones that I have. I do this with pork. Um, I do this with beef. Anytime I have bones, I freeze them until I have enough to make a stock. So, um, you know, when you cut some chicken thighs and bone them out, you might not have uh, enough to make a stock. So you just freeze them until you're ready to, to or until you have enough to make a, a batch of stock. But like I said, it's totally worth it. Okay, so I get my ladle, move my pot around. Because a lot of times, if you don't move your pot, you'll see there's like a little layer of hot, hot liquid around it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna keep this in the sink until the stock is cold. Not just barely warm or not barely cold, but it should be cold. And then I'll show you what it looks like. I'll show you how I pack it up 
and we'll give it a taste. Just to recap, this is what we've done. We've made our stock. We've tasted it, we've strained it. We've iced it down until it's cold. And you can tell this is cold because you can see there's little fat droplets on top that are getting solid. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is what I do is package it up. Uh, this is my eight core container. I get this at my restaurant supply store. It's like four bucks. It's from a company called Cambro. And that's what we use. It's the industry standard is Cambro. So don't be afraid to buy things like this. I use my restaurant supply store all the time for my home um, and it's great. The other thing that I get at my restaurant supply store are pints and I get quarts with lids. These are called deli containers and these are great for packaging stuff up. So I usually do these in pints and quarts but I'll just fill up my pints, right? Make sure you get it all over the place like I normally do. Uh, don't fill them up too much because when it freezes, it expands. And throw these in the freezer. I usually label them with a marker and they stack really nicely, okay? And uh, it's always, you'll always have some stock there when you need it. Okay, now that it's cold, I taste chicken. And that's what the most important thing is here, is that I taste chicken first. And then I get kind of a background of vegetables. Uh, there is still a little fat on here. And if it sits in the fridge overnight, you can peel that fat off. It is not that difficult. It takes a little time though. So you have to commit to doing this because it takes some time. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. We're gonna do tons more basic videos for uh, chicken stock and, and different stocks and sauces. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up. I love to read people's comments. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. I love doing them. Uh, I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.